years of teaching on this bloody Zoom and I still forget to unmute myself. I don't know what I would do for these two years if I had not got Samyukta who is my teaching assistant. I may have lost this job. So Sam, thank you so much for helping me. And as you all know, this is our last class for Hamlet and last class of the semester, okay? But before I begin, I really need to address something in this class. There has been some chatter, but before any chatter, out of the 17 people, how many have attended class already? Only five have joined. This is classic. Y'all come late even for an online class. You don't give me any excuse of traffic, no traffic, internet is spoiled. Don't give me all that. Okay, so as I was saying, I wanted to address something. There's been some chatter. I know there's always some back talk, but this time, as in yesterday, I got a really serious email from the admin of our school. And you know what the email said to me? The mandate of the email was that my classes have become too boring that Shakespeare is incredibly uninteresting for the students, okay? And that's not all. I have to make it more interesting and more importantly, I have to make it more interactive. Now, apparently this medium is supposed to be interactive. So now I don't know how to do it. This is my last class. I'm going to try to make it interactive and that's not all, okay? Some of you there, two more late Latifs are joining. Supraja is always late. She's joined late as always, okay? So that's not all. Some of you students have gone and complained to your parents. Y'all are asking your parents what and how will this class lead to our professional development, right? What are the jobs you will get by studying Shakespeare? Now, I don't know the answer to that. When I studied Shakespeare as a young person, when I was your age, I was reading for the joy of it. So the simple answer is I don't know what jobs y'all are going to get. But nevertheless, I'm going to try to make this last class as today as possible so now i don't know what it means to say let's make it more today i'm going to try and make it more today uh but before i start will some of the students at least turn on your cameras i mean this is our last class of the semester I've hardly seen you anybody no okay classic how do i know y'all are really attending the class okay there there are a few more people okay this is what i'm going to do everyone in the chat if you are in my class now please type in present because you're log in, I know you're log in and then go watch YouTube or go take a nap. Can you please present? Very good, Sahana. Thank you. You are always a good student. I would have liked to see you, but fine. Who else? Bhavna, are you there? Or are you playing the fool as always? Okay, Jones. Very good. All right. Okay, the rest of you are just sitting, mom. Basically, you're not near the computer. Are you? Sophie, are you on the comp? No. All right. Fine. Okay, present. Very good. Very good, Arundhati. Thank you so much. Okay, so in order to make it more interesting, what I did was, thanks Shubham, very good, I trust you all here. What I did yesterday was with the help of Samyukta, my very, very able teaching assistant, I became a member of your Instagram yesterday. Okay, I was very excited and you know, it was very easy to become a member and my membership name is for the love of language so y'all can go there and see if i'm there so i became a member of instagram to see what is going on right and there i found all kinds of wonderful things now the first wonderful thing i started looking for my students and guess who i found first i made a list of all the people okay uh for the love of language that's right samyukta thank you so the first person i found there was kavya kavya are you here Kavya runs these 30 second book reviews. I mean, 30 second for a book review, uh, give a little bit more time, no. But it's good, I think, you know, you're encouraging people to read, you're asking them to think about it. But a book review can be a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but, but I applaud the effort. I think that's nice, at least you're trying. Then Chanakya, I found you there as well, with that same silly photograph of yours making faces. I mean, think about it, yeah? You're putting yourself out there into the world. And Astha, my dear, I saw your display photograph. I mean, has your mother seen it? Has your mother seen your display photograph? But it's okay. It's okay. Actually, free, free will and, you know, claiming your body, all that is great. You are looking very strong in it and you own it. So that's good. That's all good. So I started following all of you. But nobody is become my friend. I thought it's like Facebook. You become a friend, then you get a friend. But I have zero friends. 
but I am following 159 accounts. And now apart from all of you, I found some wonderful Shakespeare accounts. Like that's really what I found at the end of that rabbit hole, okay? It was a wonderful rabbit hole. So the first account I found was Very Queer Shakespeare. That account was so beautiful or is so beautiful because it's reimagining many of the Shakespearean characters if they were queer. And of course, they might have been. It's existed down the ages, right? So here's a thought. They said, what if Benvolio kissed Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet? Yes, it's possible. And then in, in our very own Hamlet style, they say that what if Horatio and Hamlet have a burning crush on each other? That's certainly possible as yet. Well, you can read it that way. Then there was Dude Bro Shakespeare. Okay. I mean, here also we want to bring Dude Bro. Why? Why do we need Dude Bro everywhere? But okay, fine. You all want to make Shakespeare more fun. You want to say Dude Bro, say Dude Bro. Okay. Then there was yet another handle called Shakespeare Videshi Hai. Okay. Now I want to say to those people, my Hindi is not very good. And God knows what I'm going to do now when the mandate has come that everybody in our country must speak in Hindi. Well, we'll try. But I understand that much Hindi. And as an English teacher, my tenses are very good. Yes, Shakespeare Videshi hai. He was not from India, right? He is British. But you can't say Shakespeare Videshi hai because he's dead. So please use the past tense. Shakespeare Videshi tha. So then you want to call him Deshi, Videshi, at least get your tenses correct, all those people, okay? So that was the other account. Then I found one more account which was Shakespeare's sister. What if Shakespeare had a sister and what if all the texts were written by women? I mean, certainly a fantastic reading and, and certainly possible. Then there was Shakespeare in Love, there was Poetry Foundation and all quite wonderful, right? So I was very thrilled to be on your Instagram. And then I found something which I can use in this class. You know what I found? I found all these challenges. Why are thousands of people taking challenges on Instagram? Like really, I was questioning the intellect. But again, I'm not going to be judgmental. So hear this. One challenge was where all these action heroes, cricketers, sports persons are exercising. They are doing abdominal muscle exercises all to do what? To open a bottle cap. And this was called open the bottle cap challenge. Now this really got to me, right? Millions of people are taking it. Now what is the challenge in opening the bottle cap? You take the bottle, you open the cap. Right? That's all there is to it. And fast, 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 fast people are sharing, subscribing and resharing and millions of likes to open a bottle cap. I mean, this is where we are at, right? As a generation, but fine, open the bottle cap challenge. I accept it. But there was one more challenge that really impacted the purest in me. Okay. Now I love my coffee. Really I do. I like my, to grind my beans just before I drink them. I get them roasted in a particular way. I like it medium roast. And then I take my time in the morning. Right. Coffee is about enjoying. Take a breath. Smell the aroma. Let it brew. Think about your morning. No, but here the coffee challenge was fast, 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 fast. Instant coffee, put water, put milk, put cream, really water it down. One person drinks it, another person drinks it. A hundred people are drinking this insipid looking coffee, right? I just want to say to y'all, don't do this to coffee. Take a breath, enjoy that sip. Every sip of black coffee, ideally without sugar. But that's my love for coffee. But this gave me another idea. You know, since there are so many challenges online, I thought, why don't I create my very own Shakespearean challenge? No, 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 not Shakespearean challenge. That'll be too much. I thought I'll create a Hamlet challenge. So a Hamlet live challenge. And what do I mean? I mean that this last soliloquy that we're all doing, we should recite it in a way that we like, I can suggest a few ways and you record it or go live and put it on your Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you want to. So really let's speak today's language, right? <laughs> like they've been telling me. So try to do that. So I thought that's exciting because Shakespeare is a challenge for you. Nee, 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 nee. Shakespeare 
is a challenge for me to make it exciting for you. So I'm also taking this challenge. So there are three, four ways I'm suggesting it. Please bear with me. All this is very new to me. I can only do it because Samyukta helped me all from last evening to now. So please let's just, just cut me some slack. Okay. So this is one way to do the Hamlet's Life Challenge. So let's try this. I hope it goes well. So we're going to do it with something homemade, for example. And I have a beautiful <laughs> paper, homemade Shakespeare in color. You know, I've had it for a while. It's quite old. So I want to try this for all of you. Let's see how this goes. All right. Five seconds. And now exit Miss G. Okay. And enter Hamlet. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man? If the chief good and market of his kind give a to and feed a beast no more. Sure, he that gave us such large discourse, looking before and after us, gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fasten us unused. Now, whether it be still oblivion, or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event. A thought which watered had but one part wisdom and ever three parts scarred. I do not know. Why yet I live to say this thing's true since I've cause and will and strength and means to it. Examples gross as earth exhort me Witness this army of such mass in charge, led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit with divine ambition puffed, makes marks at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death, and danger death, even for an extra. Rightly, Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when all is at stake. How stand I then that have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep, while to my shame I see the imminent death of twenty thousand men that for a fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds fight for the plot when on the numbers cannot try the cause which is not tomb enough and continent to hide the slain oh from this time forth my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth <laughs> I'm sorry, um, you know, I'm not really a, a performer, but I tried, you know, I really tried to make it as um, Shakespearean as possible, but albeit with a paper collar. So you can try it with something homemade, you know, um, and, and I'm sorry if it also got a bit intense. I tried to make it light, but it's these words of Shakespeare, you know. They never, ever fail to touch me. And I really want us to think of this line where he says here, the imminent death of 20,000 men that for a fantasy or trick of fame go to their graves like beds, fight for a plot. 
this is really his most underrated soliloquy. Who are these soldiers? And whose war are they fighting? And he says already before this that he's ashamed of it. Why should these soldiers fight this war? And I can't help but think of where we are today in the world, where wars are being fought for profit, for money. And who are the soldiers, their families? And are they going to get that plot of land? Or is it that they want to be a plot of the narrative, the narrative of history, which is perhaps, you know, already forgetting them? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I promised to make it fun and now I've slipped back into this serious English teacher mode. My God, just, just please bear with me. But so read this soliloquy with something fun from the house. Make, make a prop, make a costume and really have fun with it. Okay, now I have a second way to do it. And I have a feeling that this second way might be more up all your alleys. Okay, not mine so much. Because um, we can use a video from YouTube. And here's what I'm thinking, okay? Um, let's take a famous white male Shakespearean actor from Britain, okay? Like uh, any great actor worth his, you know, prowess as a performer, as a thespian, has to perform Shakespeare, right? Whether it be Sir Laurence Olivier or Benedict Cumberbatch or Kenneth Brahma in this case. If you can perform as... A, you know, a Shakespearean character, then you've truly arrived, right? So I said, let's take Kenneth Branagh, very well respected Shakespearean British actor, right? And I will speak over him. I will try and interrupt him. <laughs> Not his accent, but I'll try. So here's something I'm going to do over Kenneth Branagh's video. But I also want to say that Sam then told me this has already been done. And apparently it's called Dub Smash. So I looked it up and I actually liked the words dubbing and smashing. So I'm going to try and uh, try and dub smash over the great, great Ken Brana. So just excuse me and have fun at my expense. You laugh at me also. Okay. Okay. So Sam, you want to play that video? <sighs> I'll be with you straight. Go a little before. against me, spurn my dull revenge. What is a man? If his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed, a beast, no more. Sure, he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fust in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, a thought which quartered hath but one part wisdom and ever three parts coward, I do, I do not know. know why yet I live to say this thing's to do. If I have cause and will and strength and means to do it. Examples gross as earth exhort me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince. Okay, Sam, can you pause here? I'm going to try and read over this, okay? Just give me a moment. Ah. Yes, and here we go. Okay, let's go. Led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit with divine ambition part makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure. To all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an extra. Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw, in a honest mistake. How stand I then, that her father killed, her 
mother's pain, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all this be. While to my shame, I see the imminent death of 20,000 men that were fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds. Whereon the numbers cannot try the cause, which is not tomb or continent enough to hide this thing. For from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody, or be nothing worth. <sighs> oh my god, I mean, <laughs> even this, oh gosh, did this also get extremely serious? I'm sorry, uh, I tried to keep it light, but if it got a bit serious, uh, my apologies again. But you see, I was really trying to speak over this thespian, uh, Kenneth Branagh, and uh, only that he has a budget of at least a million pounds, and here I'm in my room, <laughs> right? Um, but really, you can take any great Shakespearean actor, read over him, interrupt him, inch them out slowly, slowly. Um, and then, you know, you saw I was also trying to create the large aerial shot by walking back. Did you see that? Uh, rather clumsily, I admit. And then uh, I was imagining this landscape of Kenneth Branagh, but uh, I can't escape my reality. So I tried. So I urge you to try dubbing over any of these great actors and really enjoy yourselves and have fun with it because it's time, right? We don't have to take it lying down or sitting up, right? Okay, so that was a second way to do uh, this soliloquy, taking on, taking over an established actor, an establishment, okay, good. So now, I want to do it in a third way. And this third way really is a challenge for me. It's a challenge for me because I want to try and do it in the language I was born into, in my mother's language. And language of whose sounds I understand but I'm just not proficient enough to do this kind of work, but, but I want to try. I want to try because it really is a challenge and I want to put myself out there in front of all of you. I've never done it in front of so many people, well, at least all 13 of you. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and do Shakespeare and this Hamlet's last soliloquy in Marathi. Um, of course, I can't do the entire soliloquy in Marathi because it's difficult. So I've chosen about seven, eight lines that really ring home for me. And I hope I can do justice to it. So here goes. It says, Ankur Sautha Pravesh Sautha. To Manu Satskai. To Manu Satskai zar apla sagra ayusha kharzun. Apla sagra ayusha kharzun. To fuck the port barun. To fuck the port barun zopa kari asil to. Zopa kari asil to. The new bird pursuits. तो निव्वल पशुस मग माजी काय स्थिति आहे मग माजी काय स्थिति आहे बापा चखून झालेला बापा चखून झालेला डागा लेली गेलेली आई 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 डागा लेली गेलेली आई ओ ओ ओ माझे विचार या पुढे माझे विचार या पुढे रक्तरंजित असोत रक्तरंजित असोत 
किंवा असोत अगदीच भिकारडे असोत अगदीच भिकारडे I tried and I am trying. I'm trying to do this in this language and I have to say I've taught Shakespeare for so many years but the way I've understood the meaning just now in these last 15 seconds I don't think I've understood it like this before. Words can be violent but words can take you closer to something and I hope it's taking me closer to something vital. Okay, so this is almost the end of our class. Uh, so please try this Hamlet's live challenge. Try this last soliloquy, please, in any language. In the language you were born into, whether it's Urdu, whether it's Farsi, whether it's Dakhani, Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu really a language that you struggle with, a language that you want to challenge because you and I have to claim Shakespeare, it's the language of art, right? So try it in any language and, and, and see what those words do to you. Um, we still have one or two minutes to end this class and as per <laughs> admin rules, you know, I can't end the class even a second early because I'll get fined. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this meeting on. I'm going to end this class, but I have also something to say. This is the last class of the semester. This is the last class we do Hamlet. And I think this is the last time I teach. because I need to learn a new language, perhaps many new languages. Um, yeah, so this is the last class. It's been a pleasure getting to know you all. Can you please turn on your cameras one last time so I can see you all? No? Okay, I continue living in this black hole. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and before I go, Samyukta, can you please play that song in Marathi? Thank you so much, Anuja, for that brilliant performance. Um, and now, as always, I will invite everyone to put their questions, comments, and first reactions um, in the in the Q and A box. Um, and you know, we'll get started with a discussion with both the director of this piece, Chanakya, as well as the actor uh, Anuja Gosalkar. So, hi, welcome both. Uh, Thank you so much again for that wonderful piece. And thank you uh, also to the cast and crew of Hamlet's Life for putting together these wonderful, wonderful set of six performances. Um, okay, I see. Okay, so wow is, is a first reaction I see. <laughs> and I absolutely agree. Uh, but perhaps we can, since this is the last performance, we can, you know, talk about all of them. And 
I was just wondering, you know, um, in each of these performances, um, every character has had an opportunity almost to reflect in a way that might not have happened had they not been in front of this camera or facing this faceless audience, right? So I was just wondering if you both uh, could speak a little bit about the process of a character sort of coming to terms with their vulnerabilities or in this case, you know, their uh, idea of what life looks like for them um, in, in sort of creating this whole uh, series. Anuja, you want to start? Talk about this piece and then maybe I could speak a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I find it hard to play characters outside of myself, like something that's very far out and not very close to who I am because it's uh, something that I don't enjoy always. But with this, Chanakya really brought out a delicate side of my character, I suppose. Um, I have studied English. I have taught English for a while. And I do have a complicated relationship with my mother tongue uh, because I'm always asked what kind of a Maharashtrian am I if I don't speak Marathi, if I don't speak literary Marathi. And I thought that was a really interesting provocation to work with. Um, and, and I do teach, so this was quite close to me that I teach, um, that I'm always questioning this notion of language. And so it came to bear in, in this fashion. And, and the other thing I was thinking of is that a lot of teachers have struggled with using Zoom, right? Um, yeah. Education on Zoom has been a challenge for everybody. And there are so many teachers today in the audience I can see. And I've been thinking that along with live performance, because I'm a performance maker and I'm an actor, along with acting, teaching is the other thing that has been really impacted by the pandemic and by this new medium. It's challenged both these professions most severely. So it was fun to extend myself to become a teacher and say, what are the challenges? Because as a performance maker, I know what the challenges have been. But as a teacher, I also I know there have been many. So that's how we built on this character, Achano. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Anuja. Uh, I think that's an interesting point that Anuja just brought out about teaching also is a performance, right? Every time you teach, you're performing. And I think one had to perform a, perform very consciously in front of Zoom. Uh, I mean, I taught throughout the summer and there was always this thing about, you know, what your background looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is like setting up, right, for a performance. Uh, so uh, I think, and going by that, I think we also thought that, okay, what if students don't switch on their video in this class at all? <laughs> so it's like a little high school or first year college kind of a Zoom you're yeah. trying to play. Uh, and just to get to this point that uh, that you asked about, you know, this whole online, them, them sort of playing this online. Um, I think for me, the idea of online, something that even Anuja and I were talking and has also come out in our other performances that we have done in the, in the series. Um, this idea that, again, the common theme of, you know, uh, the fact that how online can also be an interesting medium where you, for your, for, for a very, from a very social point of view, you depend on it to connect to network, to interact, to meet friends, and you know, to talk about your thoughts, your ideas, to put your thoughts out. And at the same time, it also has the element of alienation. It can also make you feel very lonely. So this idea of loneliness is also something that came out in our conversations. And in fact, as we were working, we found what 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 could be with uh, with this character, with Miss G, and how could she find that question? And then we found a very interesting metaphor with language that Anuja just spoke about. Um, and in that sense, uh, the struggle with it, uh, in this soliloquy, just in the end, Hamlet says, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. And he's been saying this from the, from the third soliloquy, but he's just constantly, in, as a character, you see that there's a lot of delay in, in sort of finding that conviction. So uh, I feel playing it online was a very uh, interesting choice for me for all the pieces so that there is always this relationship with um, one's reality that even yesterday after the performance we were talking about the reality of the performer, the reality of the character, the reality between the audience and the performer in this kind of, uh, the character and the performer in this zone. Um, so I think it allows for multiple realities to exist in, in that sense. So yeah, I don't know if I'm answering the, the question exactly, but sort of that's that's been the thing that the common aspect of keeping things online, that they are talking to someone online and not just talking to themselves, 
but there is an interaction and with miss g's character i think <laughs> this the setting of a teacher in a class with the last soliloquy i think a lot of things kind of uh, came together in a very organic way uh, i think it's a second rehearsal itself we found the starting point and then we kept working on it uh, as you we went ahead yeah it's really interesting i was also thinking um, and i don't know if this was by design or it's just something the character inhabited but miss g's character also had this like slight nervousness i i mean at least that's what i thought like you know i picked up on and um, and it just like reminded me you know that obviously uh, it was difficult for students to move to online classes but for teachers to make sure that it it is still like fruitful and engaging uh, obviously it was also a challenge and, and i think that nervousness that comes with that character you know even with the beginning where uh, she doesn't unmute herself and it takes her a couple of seconds to realize that was really interesting because it it sort of hammers home that point so that was uh, that was very interesting to see and uh, i think another thing that you talked about uh, about language was also also really crucial i think um, because of course you've had different languages throughout the six episodes right there's been kannada there's been marathi now hindi english and of course they're all adapting this from hamlet which is uh, a different english than most people are used to in modern times and so i think language plays a really crucial role uh, not just not just in un- us now understanding what hamlet might have said but also in the way we communicate um, through literature uh, and through performances so thank you both for that uh, i will move on to a question that has come in um so okay so someone says wonderful to see ananja perform after a hiatus uh, i wanted to ask what is your take on a certain kind of masala shakespeare that is adaptations into what is largely a mainstream indianized bar uh, and also was there a meditation on the seeming perennial nature of shakespeare's plays Yeah. Uh, I think, I think Shakespeare is already, as they say, you know, he's quite masala, full of masala. I think, and I think that way. That's why I think Bollywood finds it so easy to also adapt so much of Shakespeare in that sense. And yeah, I think uh, in the context of if you look at at least Indian cinema, if you look at things like Omkara or Makbul that have used Shakespeare's works very interestingly, especially Makbul, I think one of the finest adaptations. for for me personally and i i i just feel like uh, yeah i think it allows for all of that um and the fact that the fact that it even the soliloquies i'm back speaking about this this particular series i think we've also tried to find what is that one or one or two ideas that we want to really focus on with each soliloquy so if you see with each of them we've tried to find something that we can connect to with that sometimes it's just a parallel connection that you are making with the characters like sometimes it's a very immediate connection that one is making sometimes one is just interpreting it in that way and with this piece i feel a lot of things are happening there is a parallel there's a connection that miss g is making with herself then there is a connection between interpreting it as a teacher also like the, the whole aspect of war and you know it's interesting and i think i would like anuja to talk more about it that when we initially started working on it the first set was you know how do we really approach it what are some of the things we would like to question over here and what are some of the things we did but as we were working i think we also found some very interesting things that we got to play and you know as we were reading and something that happened even when anuja was exploring the marathi text uh, in the in the process and something very different happened so i feel the the aspect of shakespeare being you know perennial nature of it or even the fact that it's misala i think also has to do with it it can be adapted in so many contexts so i think this piece also used that as a maybe a starting point i would say uh, considering it's a short piece but i think we did go in with that idea that uh, how how could it be imagined in a different language itself so yeah anuj if you want to add um no i mean uh, i just wanted to say that we approached it also like trying to question shakespeare a lot uh because we've done it i mean i've studied english literature we've studied contemporary literature i studied film so that questioning is there but i wanted to come back to shakespeare i just wanted to come back to something simple and fundamental and text um because i do very kinds of work and i depart from text a lot but the joy of this was just coming back to text in a really uh focused manner 
uh, and rediscover Shakespeare actually uh, because there have been so many postmodern takes on Shakespeare, you know, feminist takes, all kinds of things one is aware of, is interested in. But I was like, how do we just come back and then find something in the idea of language? Um, and therefore also contextualizing the mother's language, you know, Hamlet's mother. Just to put it all there, Hamlet was angry with the mother. I'm, I'm you know, grappling with my, you know, the tongue that I'm not good at. Um, so also to bring some of that reality or my documentariness in, into it, yeah. That's really interesting. While I think the fact that there are lots of uh, interpretations of uh, Shakespeare and Hamlet, of course, uh, and that still you know you felt this sort of urge to come back to the to the text and sort of see what you could do with it. Uh, yeah, and it's interesting that uh, you know people are using the term Masala Shakespeare because I, there is a book called Masala Shakespeare that deals exactly with like the Indian adaptations and Indian sort of Indianness of Shakespeare as it might. And it was also interesting that in your uh, sort of feature character, you, you were talking about how Shakespeare has been actually used by so many other people too, you know, uh, as, as, for example, queer Shakespeare or, uh, and you know, of course, like you said, there are lots of adaptations of it and people have found ways to make Shakespeare subversive. And I mean, not that it, the plays themselves aren't, but also like, how do you take that? Uh, okay, yeah, so if, if you're interested in the Indian versions, I would, uh, you know, also to check out Masala Shakespeare as well. Uh, okay, let me see, there's uh, a question. So someone, such a great question about the online audience, wow. Yeah, just like Miss G never saw her students, and you've never seen us. So what is your relationship with your online audience? I try to answer it. Uh, like Miss G never saw a student say, you've never seen us, so what is your relationship? I find the idea of the invisible audience striking. Um, it's always been there and I cannot, I mean, for me, the invisible audience is actually more powerful sometimes than a present embodied, you know, presence in a live theatre because I work a lot with digital performance making and virtual reality. So the idea of somebody we cannot see and they can see us is a great handing back of power to the audience as well. Uh, we, they hold a lot of power, right? I don't see them, I'm not sensing their breath. Um, so for me, I, for me, it's also a redistribution of power between audience and performer. And that's exciting and this invisible audience is much harder to get their attention because they could be doing their dishes. They could be, you know, playing video games. Um, so then how do I capture them? And yet I must respect that simultaneity. I must respect that somebody might be playing games on their phone or chatting or sexting or whatever it is that they do. And yet they are seeing me. So I'm excited by the simultaneous sort of time and space, you know, that the audience inhabits along with my show. Because it very well could be that you're cooking and you're listening. Um, so for me, it's a great breaking down of hierarchy of theatre that we have to A, fight for their attention and then be okay. Because normally in the theatre, you sit upright, you can't drink water, you can't chew gum. Here I can lie down and watch her or like, you know, I can live my life and that's okay. <laughs> it's not so revered. So I really find that very exciting. It's a great question. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a really nice and fresh, I think, take given that, you know, everyone sort of tired of doing things online I think that's a really a good way to put it because it does it does do something that is different and necessary uh, uh, that the physical say might not do in the same way uh, okay so there is another question uh, that says uh, first first they say uh, such a great performance uh, it took us a very little time to get attached to Miss G's character uh, and perhaps that's something we can dwell on also but the question is uh, they've noticed that there is a rhythm in which Shakespearean dialogues are delivered. Could you please uh, talk a little bit more about that and how that works? Uh, so, okay, yeah, I think, yeah, of course there is a rhythm. And I think one of the, uh, one of the things that we, uh, I mean, I, I can speak from this experience of creating this series. I think, uh, I always try to see how 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 the performer wanted to really approach it. Like, did they want to try? Like in the first piece, you see you see Pritam only using a very small section of the soliloquy, but putting it on the piano. Uh, in the second one, it's just narrated, uh, you know, in as a character who's performing in a high school play. 
then the third one is sung like a song uh, in Kannada. Uh, he, uh, yesterday's performance, Padmavati Rao used it as just as someone who just narrate, uh, you know, just speaking those lines with that kind of you know classical tone and meter to it. With today's piece, I think we went through a lot of interesting, uh, you know, you know, sort of aspects while working on it. One version we tried was, can this be a conversation with the audience? Then how does it change? Can this be partly a conversation, but partly also sort of making that contact with the audience and telling them something like, you know, pausing at those very specific lines and, you know, sort of, you know, giving it to the audience, giving some sort of a, you know, a give and take with the audience that you want to play. And it also connects to this question of online audience, right? Because you're not seeing anyone. If I was doing it in an auditorium where I could sense the audience sitting in front of me, it's a very different maybe reaction that one may get. Uh, so in that sense is also in this format I guess is also playing to yourself because in that sense on zoom you're seeing yourself do it right I mean you can hide self you but in that sense you can see yourself doing it so it's like talking to yourself and uh, uh, I know I'm digressing but uh, uh, what I was what I was coming to was that yes there is the if you go into the very traditional training of Shakespearean acting there is that training that you will get of the meter and all of that um, honestly in this process I wasn't too caught up with that I really wanted to see how can the words affect us uh, how can the words affect us with respect to what do we feel when we say these lines and I think uh, I think every performer has an inherent rhythm also so I think that that's something I always feel that uh, it shouldn't sound like every performer was trained to the same school and they all sound same yeah. when they do Shakespeare I think it's it's great that they should sound different, that it, and that's why in the end when she narrated the Marathi bits, it came very differently. It had a very different meter and a rhythm to it, and uh, you know we went through all of we went through so many versions of that also. Anuja, if you want to talk about the last, the Marathi version, that how we how we also tried a rap version. <laughs> well, we tried a rap version of Marathi because we were like, why are we holding it to such high regard? She should still keep it playful as Miss Um So we yeah. tried a rap of this, but. But the rap, um, you know, the words are so powerful. I think we would have massacred it if we rapped it. Uh, but it's got that strong political thing. The Marathi words are actually, and I have to say, as a performer, also reading the Marathi text genuinely did something to me. Genuinely changed the way I understood this a little bit. And I, I wasn't lying about it. It really sure. meant something. Yeah. yeah. I just want to add that, you know, that, you know, also, with with the, in the end though they didn't have any music but the way she took it also had that sense of 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 uh, of this powerful words being exchanged which also is the nature of rap so there is a composition one can put it in that and then in this we decided that okay we if we didn't have music how would they come across to us you know and uh, yeah i that i think that again connects to the question of meter and rhythm and how you want to take it and how every language has its own like the first time Anuja read the translation she's like hey there is an inherent rhythm to this which she found it the moment she read it and then right. there's something about language yeah. again with that yeah. yeah and I think that's beautiful like you don't have to be trained or know what an ambient pentameter is you want to read it in whatever language it might be and find find that rhythm uh, whether it's the, it's the one intended or not um, okay so uh, we are almost out of time and given that this is the last performance, uh, I do want to ask uh, you, Chanakya, why Hamlet? <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, I think at one level it's, uh, I would say why Hamlet, I think for specifically if you ask me for this exhibit or for this, yeah. uh, for this whole thing, uh, the series that we've developed. So I have, uh, the two sort of texts which I've spoken about also that have sort of got me thinking about Hamlet in today's context are these two texts called Hamlet on the Holodeck and Hamlet and the Madness of the World. Hamlet on the Holodeck is a book by a digital humanities professor called Janet Murray and Hamlet on the Holodeck is a, are like three essays by this academic called Octavian Sayu who speaks about Hamlet in today's context in three different productions of Hamlet done in the US of course from a very Euro-American context but that's that's something that got me thinking and he speaks about some very interesting takes of how Hamlet should be imagined today 
though i think couple of years ago when i was reading when i was t- looking through there was a reference to the soliloquies of hamlet and i went back to it and i was reading them and i was like you know even if i read these out of the context of having watched the entire play they themselves by itself have a very interesting insight into the mind of hamlet and when when the call for psyche was out uh, when you know we were calling out fabrications for artists to you know interpret psyche in different ways i thought here is hamlet whose different states of states you know psychological states sort of change through the course of the play and there are so many things can one can attach to it one can say he's confused one can say this is that one can say this is that but i think fundamentally i feel with each soliloquy the idea is uh, i felt i didn't have to know the play but i could still you know engage with the idea of the human mind in that sense so which is why i think hamlet and hamlet is a complex character uh, which is why i also wanted to make this series not that you have to read hamlet and come to watch it after watching the series if you want to read hamlet that's that's great uh, yeah. but you don't have to you don't have to also watch it in a sequence each each piece should stand on its own in its own way in its own sort of interpretation that it's trying to do uh, and yeah and as a theater maker i've always stayed away from shakespeare Uh, because of i mean i'm not trained in shakespeare uh, acting or you know directing shakespeare in that sense but uh it was always there in the back of my mind that i want to do something if i did something i would try to start i would want to start with hamlet so thank you science gallery for <laughs> science gallery bangalore for sort of believing in this idea and i think the idea itself went through a lot of iterations for me because i was to realize that in that process it was not about okay we have hamlet we have soliloquies now let's do it it was really about now we have this but now what are we going through what are our times how are we trying to make sense of it and i think i have to say this that it's i think it's it's a piece created with all the performers i think each performer as anuja said i i mean i would say it's 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 also there are a lot of so many documentary elements or sort of semi autobiographical elements from each piece because what i mean as we started talking about it actors were very naturally responding to the text they were finding their own meaning to it so there is there is them in it and i find that always very powerful that there is a part of you even in the character that you play and i think that always has a very interesting uh, give and take in at least in live performance i always feel in the theater obviously and i think that's really the reason uh, uh, so i really hope that you know if people watch and engage with all the six episodes in the series there's a they, they would make some connections we have we've tried to keep some small recurring motifs very very simple things with design like there's a collar which appears yeah. in all the pieces yeah uh, but they are very simple small ideas not like not like if you don't if you don't see this you can't make sense of the next one or something or because there's a disconnect or something yeah. so yeah that's really there and i want to thank uh, really all my actors uh, everyone at science gallery you vasudha gayatri madhushri uh, sankalp all of you it's been it's been great uh, and uh, to all my actors uh, starting from preetam kavya prasad uh, satvik uh, padmavati uh, anuja and my team which is all there all of us are here <laughs> uh, arvind aastha and samyukta i think uh, it's it's been really uh, It's been really a coming together of a very special group of people, and uh, it's it's my first Shakespeare kind of journey, and that too with Hamlet with these people. I don't think I would have done this without them. So yeah, I just want to take this moment to thank them also, all of them. Wow, Jyoti, thank you so much. Yeah, we're also we're, we're very glad that we could host your first uh, foray into Shakespeare with Hamlet, and you know these these six performances have really sort of uh, brought us. Um, closer to you know unpacking what hamlet might mean in our lives and uh, you know how it might affect us today and so thank you for that uh, we've gone through like memory forgive uh, forgiveness uh, confusion anxiety aggression so much uh, in the past six performances and i highly highly encourage everyone to watch all of them they're all available on the on our exhibit uh, All Hamlet plays, of course, up on the Psyche website, but you can also find them on our YouTube channel. So do do watch all six of them. Um, they are all self-contained, but you know it's it's a truly truly amazing experience when you see all six of them. Uh, and I hope that you all take away something something meaningful to, uh, for yourselves. 
do it. Um, and yeah, we are out of time, so I will take this opportunity to thank both of you again. Thank you so much, Anju, and thank you, Jonathan, for directing these past six performances and for uh, being an absolute pleasure to work with. We've had a great time with you. And for everyone, uh, you know, feel free to check out the exhibit, like I said, uh, but also Chanakya will be in a workshop with our young adults between the ages of 15 to 28 uh, on 8th of today. So, you know, if you're interested in like sitting in a little more, feel free to sign up for that. Uh, and you know, do put your uh, comments in our feedback form. We would really like to know what you thought and what else you want to see from us. Uh, and yeah, do take care, stay safe. Please enjoy the rest of your uh, Sunday evening. Thank you once again to the cast of Four Sunday Live. And yeah, see you for now. Bye. I just want to thank all the audience members who took out time and came on a Sunday evening. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. Uh, and thank you for your comments, for your questions. Uh, it's really, really wonderful to read them. And I think maybe that's how online feedback is. Yeah. To, to read it through that. And read. But yeah, wonderful. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.